awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. I think so. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeous plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. Fucking chicken and biscuits. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're a perfect match? presumptuous my cuisine and your taste buds that is Aww. such confidence such grace could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery you know I think we might make a great team a single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eye Damn as he it. gazes out the window and with the right business partner, I know it can't fail. I know I can't fail. Business partner. Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears, unable to speak. The only answer you could find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school, after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? Breaking your house. I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it. But I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. Oh, her and the robot had sex. It's okay. I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Look at look at how she's standing. The robot her hair. She got laid. She, she bow-legged. Sure, but... Will you... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him, you'd better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. Then you sucked his spark plug? <laughs> But he was just interested in spending more one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, uh, yeah, sure. I can get to know the little metallic guy. Oh, I bet you did. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends. But things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving? Yes. As if that's a typical first date to go on yes. with a talking pressure cooker. Jesus. <laughs> and now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell the whole story. However, bottling up the, the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. Jesus! You what? Nothing happened but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Together with your bestie, you feel like you can do anything. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from the distance that they're picking on Pop. Though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. 
Because, you know, he's pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, God. Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. <clears throat> I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. Hee <laughs> hee. Sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Aww. You can get your swirly dipped, too. Oh, no. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Mm. Because I'm literally the biggest person in school. There's that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school. But who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You've got some nerve, Big Daddy Grizz, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. <laughs> now you're twisting my words and I won't have it you clench your fist but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince in pain doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that might as well just give up I'll never give up ever Colonel Sanders arrives, just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A neutrally intuitive, per naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Big Daddy Grizz, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back to fighting foam by this afternoon. Uh -huh. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday, I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Uh, technically, I don't believe a winner was declared, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? Hmm. Um, but what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce. Huh. It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Big Daddy Grizz. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. Uh -huh. uh, maybe you should tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine arts of fine foods. I'll uh, see you inside, Big Daddy Grizz. <laughs> Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by the interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa! That's that book! It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of gr grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered in arcane writing. Cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edge of the page. I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better 
on the upcoming final exam. <laughs> that is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else? Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate times calls for desperate measures. Your character's stupid. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you. And a pretty good excuse to try it out. What do you want to do? Oh, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> you take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give to him as a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable. Uh, wait to see what happens. He focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perch in the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence, I told you never to come back here. Terrence, I will destroy you, Terrence. <laughs> <coughs> Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. <laughs> I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings me to an important point. Thank you. A big daddy Grizz for reminding me that uh, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, but before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Okay. I told you to save it for after class. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clink appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank language of mechanical noises. Or... But no. You could have... You had to show off to your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joanne, J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. They, you can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain. Or off a cliff for all I care. Drama. Sad beep. <laughs> Clink begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels. And then a loud ding 
stops him in his tracks. Beep. What's that coming out of his face? Oil. You broke him. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Shoe. Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Considered that he himself has wheels, no, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend that they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pet pale over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about upcoming competition, your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Uh. Okay. I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that, in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke. Even if the source of her frustration is a silly, is, is such a silly boy. The only one on one day! Yeah. I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone. You and me, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up. Imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up with Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it. And a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank, or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who couldn't settle for the, who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. I hope it's not Pop anyway. Pop's too fucking young for her. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were prep talking, Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it. The location of your final challenge. A test of will. A test of courage. A test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his evil-er counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Big Daddy Grizz's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, 
making this dish come second nature to you and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven but as soon as you do <laughs> your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders uh, Big Daddy Grizz what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualiz visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You're usually happy. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who is hungry. But the last time you let Colonel Sanders get into your head, it cost you a cook off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. But that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. <laughs> That's an oddly specific distance. But you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie. With an all but a crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> no, I can smell that it was made with a heaping and help, helping of TLC. But it'll probably stop burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. <gasps> it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground. There are no rules, that is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up to the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese, plus a pot pie you've been practicing, are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van and Ashley are preparing wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam and her giant, magnificent glass of several sets of tweezers, she's definitely preparing to go big, going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be Harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity in this room starts at, at full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, Baster Blaster. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roll. Ashley 
scoops her pastries out of a tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality, spatula. Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? <gasps> That's the singularity. As was foretold. <gasps> We mustn't let it happen. Or the appliance uprising will take us all. self dish Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own. And you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic? Even if it's almost certainly evil magic? I'm doing it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. A subtle wink? I believe in you, Big Daddy Grizz. Miriam notices too. Aww. And I've always believed in you, Big Daddy Grizz, ever since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. <laughs> you turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who is cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she even find Eye of Newt? Oh no. Or maybe it's crack. Or like what, cocaine. That the you got from boiling the pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. Oh, no. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. <laughs> Steve, wait, what happened to Gorko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spork Monsters are many. I think Gorko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve. And I hate to battle. So I'd say you're pretty alright. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got a grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? Ha, huh, yeah. You guessed it, sorta. Uh, if you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in the pot of salty water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country... You can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's 
kind of like the time in monster school that I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class and when I woke up you toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind, I'll tell you later. Good luck. <laughs> Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. I can do this. I have what it takes. I can. Came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. <laughs> you went super saiyan. <laughs> Your, my hair is, my heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for. Yes, Big Daddy Grizz, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. <laughs> the power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure, my hands are steady, my taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground, energy coursing through your body. You know that this is the power you can, with this power you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful. Because while you are powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can be saved. But don't worry, Big Daddy Grizz. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese. And time is almost up. So you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Well, following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfold a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. Hey, that sounds amazing. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union. Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying! Oh no. It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asked for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. <laughs> May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks, I must say. It's not the worst prank in UCSLA history, but it's not extremely yearbook, ma exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks. Clanks. 
Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature whirl, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow, he got must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. I've made... Tendon Udon Noodles in Savory Soup. That looks amazing. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny Nar Naruto Maki? I spy a float on this itsy bitsy bowl. Yes, chef. Uh, please call me Sprinkles. A chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime. Would anyone else like a taste? No, no more. Oh, come on. It's not one of those dogs who don't floss. I'm not one of those dogs who don't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine. I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire mill had been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with such love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Big Daddy Grizz, for helping me to believe in myself. Now I want to make a small fucking Van Van, you're up. Now, describe your dish. I made... Uni over smooth egg custard in an axe-hued urchin shell. Topped with caviar. You were one type of urchin with spines from a second? Different colored type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly what I did. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni. But he can't get his nose close to on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof woof. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Grr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first. But he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Ouchie! My tongue! <coughs> the professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. It kept poking my tongue. Disqualified. <laughs> that was the best Mike Tyson impersonation ever in all day. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles can make it difficult to eat? Fucking idiot. Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. <laughs> Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount simplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his 
swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know, yeah. I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my allergic, my agitated tongue. Next student. Ashley, it's time to step up. Do what she makes. Now, describe your dish. I made... Little thing is orange blossom Turkish delights on a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That just sounds like too much shit. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Then why disqualify? Don't eat the food. It's a cooking school. Got toast in your ears or something, Big Daddy Grizz? I told you, it's a display piece. You're fired. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. And I did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judge on eating, I'd go to a college for eating. School for the hungry. What a dumb bitch. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Huh? Rage overtakes Ashley as she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This is not the last you've heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs. What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in the kitchen, you give me this. This thing and completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. <laughs> you pass, you pass, and you pass. And you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes in the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. Dun, dun, dun. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze up, uh, when they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, 
they admit that they are indeed, that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed, everyone has passed, there were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could you be better than this one? <laughs> Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking area, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog is in the house! Oh, oh, oh! You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world renowned turntablist. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Well, they're dressed differently. She looks better this way. Yeah. Van Van and Ashley. Tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's the Spork Monster. He has totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here on, I'd prefer that everyone refer to me by my name. Party Monster. Where's Monster? <laughs> I should have had him <laughs> play this. The student tries to finish what he was saying, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork or Party Monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam's rom Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking. And you know she's going to do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef hat, a crown. Welcome back, Pop. You know, you weren't able to compete in the final exam and accept your diploma. So we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's for the school's dean. Burger King. Burger King. Wendy's. Instead of the red hair. The pigtails. Yeah. Oh, now he's the school dean's son. Oh, okay. And we get a new wing of the school. Not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electric hi electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? Hmm. I actually feel like I knew that the whole time. <laughs> now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. <laughs> I have just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. 
It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Okay. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. He's now he's wearing a just a regular t shirt. Yep. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day when you met him. He has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give him a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. <laughs> that motherfucker. He did, he took his shit. That motherfucker. <laughs> that motherfucker. <laughs> he made the chicken, I made everything else. <laughs> I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken too late we already did the end question mark no it's not the end as everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor Big Daddy Grizz what are you doing sitting all alone Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me, what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Uh, goatee, billions of dollars, and chicken. <laughs> Off the top of my head, oh, I don't know, a spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of cooking school, Close Academy enough. of Learning, you the just to name a few. You forgot the of it truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Uh, yes, I'd love to. As you glide across the dance floor hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my hundredth franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Big Daddy Grizz. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um... I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. What? But who will help me? Who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, uh, based on your time at school, do you really think running a restaurant is the best pass forward? Could it be? You found a love connection, but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Can you live with only half of him? Would you be able to endure sharing him with his other love? The life of an entrepreneur? There's no stop. I suppose I can enroll in pastry school. Oh, my dear Big Daddy Grizz. I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. Well, that's that. Not much of a dating sim. It's pretty much just kind of trying to get on Colonel Sanders' good side. I mean, playing the game while you're hungry, it does make you want chicken. Which is why we <laughs> ordered chicken. We fell for that. <laughs> Fell for it, uh, wing, drumstick, and tender. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a fun game. I liked the graphics on it. Um, the interaction was pretty good. The uh, dialogue could use some work with the English grammar. Um, but other than that, I mean, it, it was pretty good. I would give it a, uh, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. 
uh, when it comes to games. But it was uh, fun nonetheless. You successfully romanced Colonel Sanders. I didn't get to be a chef in uh, KFC, but uh, I get to sleep with the Colonel when he gets home. You get to make the secret herbs and spices <laughs> when you get uh, Yeah, throw in that 12th herb. Oh, shit. But, uh, yeah. So, that was I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger-licking good dating simulator. I don't really know what else to say with that one. Uh, so I, yeah. So, uh, till next time. Stay nerdy and stay sexy. Always. Always.